what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now And get in that car Leave a little note And we'll drive real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air. Hello Good morning ish it's noon I um fell back asleep But that's fine A brunch was just you know brunch and normally i fall back asleep but happy day three of summer ween how is everyone feeling are you feeling good great my hair is a mess it's fine i'm leaving it because we are sprinting today i'm not worrying about it today what i'm worrying about is trying to finish final girls support group this one this is the one that i'm trying to finish there's something crawling on this camera are we about to have i don't know what that was <laughs> But let's pretend it didn't happen, okay? Okay, great. So, like I said, the plan for today is just to finish the Final Girls support group. I actually am not gonna go to Bath and Body Works today. I'm gonna try to go tomorrow earlier in the morning because today is a lot. Today is a lot. And I just don't. I don't want to be out among people. I know there's gonna be a ton of fireworks going on. I'm not into it. I'm not about it. I'm very very incredibly annoyed by it so <laughs> yay but aside from that I decided to this is just a life update so if you don't want this then keep it pushing but mainly the most important thing in my life right now is these Chobani flips I'm obsessed with them I love Greek yogurt Greek yogurt is actually the only yogurt I like and I did not know it's actually technically good for you so that's great so glad my doctor was like that's what you use for a snack that's healthy and i was like oh my god but don't look at the crumble cookies we get <laughs> but seriously don't i don't remember if i put crumble cookies in the second day vlog if not dude i'm still putting that footage in because first of all it's what the people want second of all it's beautiful i love it it is not just what the people want it's what the people need but right now, I'm eating this s'more s'mores Chobani Flip. This is like, this is my favorite one of theirs that I've tried. There's also a peach cobbler one. But I like it because it's just, in here, it's some graham cracker. It's some milk chocolate. It's little toasted sugary bits, but it's not actually marshmallow. And then it's vanilla low-fat. Greek yogurt and it's just good it's like the perfect amount too that it's not too much going on without further ado let's get into final girls support group so let's let's talk so basically I'm gonna since this is like what I'm focusing on I'll just do a recap of what it's about in this world there are a group of girls who are the final girls and to be a final girl what has to happen is you have to be a, like a bunch of people are killed and attacked not in that order. Attacked and killed is the order. And then you are also attacked, but you end up killing your attacker. Uh, there's also something about sequels. So apparently every one of them had like a round two and they won that as well. Which, that's actually something I do find very scary. Is So you have the initial thing that essentially gets you famous, right? But then you also have like the fangirls. And that is something that, like I already think people who like Bailey Sarian who do their makeup and talk about true crime I I do enjoy her channel I do think there's a very fine line to toe when it's an entertainment platform and form and then you know something like true crime but it's the what that one it's kind of like you know uh sometimes it's done well sometimes it's not but when it comes to the people who are fangirls, like when TikTok was having a rise of Richard Ramirez and Ted Bundy fangirls, I was like, y'all, this is just like when Tumblr had the Columbine girls. And it was crazy to me because I'm like, do y'all not understand? Like, this is very pick me energy. This is very... Oh, but I could change him. I would just be like, oh, it's not... You're okay. Don't do this. This isn't you. Like... 
girl no no and so basically the second round the sequel is like that group of fans of the serial killer or whoever who attacked the final girl the initial time then come and like for his revenge or whatever which I, I think that part's scary and you know I've been realizing the mo this is the book that has scared me the most as well as Firekeeper's daughter has made me a little anxious just because they're so real and they're realistic and like paranormal horror like the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires my best friend's exorcism they do not scare me for a long time they scare me when i'm reading it but when i close the book we're good but with final girl support group it's all realistic and not only is it realistic it's things that have already happened and it's happened multiple times so it is very scary in that way. You keep thinking about it. So I'm gonna try to read it during the day so that I don't. And I'll read my demon book at night. Sounds about right. So I'm at the part where uh, basically someone's hunting down the final girls and everything's coming together. Multiple have been attacked. It's getting high stakes. I think I'm about 30% of the way through. One comment I wanted to make was Grady Hendrix. <sighs> Dude, I really need you to lay out these age categories quickly because I don't know if I just didn't, because I do have a tendency to not take in certain characteristics unless it's like how they look. I do try to hone in on that because I like to cast characters in my head. But when it comes to age and things like that, I usually base it on how they act. However, the therapist has two sons. One is really young, under 10, and the other one is, I assumed, a teenager because they said he's lanky and he's awkward looking and all that. Well, uh, Miss Ma'am walks in on him doing a thing, like a thing, which I don't know why horror books will include such random sexual things like that. Like, I don't, I don't understand that. What was the point of that? But she walks in on that and then it comes out because I was like, um, that's a child. You need to go. Like, that's really weird. Then it's blatantly stated he's a 26 year old man. And I was like, oh, I, and I wasn't confused that he's living at home because, you know, like, listen, listen, it's, I don't think there's any age limit. It's whatever works for you works for you, you know what I'm saying? But like the way he acted, his mannerisms and how he was described didn't line up with a 26 year old man. So I was incredibly confused. And then I was like, oh, well, I mean, thanks for letting me know the age after you were weird about it. Because she also made a comment about how he's handsome for his age. And when I tell you, I have no idea how old this girl is. She keeps saying 16 years ago. Let's do the math. We're gonna do the math. So I'm gonna pretend that it's 2020 in this. So it's 2020, so she was 16, it was 16 years ago that her thing happened. So it's 2004. Um, 16, 17 is like a good age. I'll round out to 17. So that means she was born in 1987. That's not that old. So she's 33. Okay, so that's about right. Like that's, I, she sounds like she's 40 is why I'm a little confused. And she references things like she is Gen X. That's why I was like not understanding her age. So 33, and if you've read this, please let me know because good lord, I'm losing my mind trying to do math. Y'all know I don't do math like this. 33, 26, but she refers to him as a kid. So she would only be, what, seven years older than him? That's like, whatever. I really don't. I really don't know. It just confused me. But as long as I can still picture my girl, Jamie Lee Curtis, I'm good. I'm good. As long as I can keep doing that, I'll do that. I am going to now picture her a younger version. So about, about 30 years younger, apparently, than the Halloween movie version of her. That's fine. That's fine for me. I still like it. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna hop on sprints now because it is getting close to that time. My partner is bringing home another round of Starbucks, so that's exciting. And uh, yeah, I will obviously check in with you guys as we go on through the day. So let's, let's get going.
Okay, hi guys. So, a little update for you. I decided to start in on First Grave on the right, which I think is technically classifying as a cozy mystery. I'm not 100% sure, but it reads like one and it feels like one, so I think that it is. But we are following our main character, Charlie, and she is a part-time, let me see, private investigator, yeah. And then she's also a Grim Reaper. So the way that this opens up is she wakes up from her private investigator job the night prior and she finds a dead guy in her apartment and apparently that's the norm for her. That's how they find her. She's like this beacon of light that they are gravitating towards. But I did decide to pick this up on Libro, so I'm not really sure where I'm at, but I want to say that I'm already probably like a couple chapters into it and I'm really enjoying it. I think that it is funny. It is, uh, <laughs> whoops it is definitely different than anything that i've ever read but i do want to read more cozy mysteries and more just cozy books in general so first of all as always if you have recommendations definitely comment them because i will look into them i am completely obsessed with the genre and i love them so much i will also link down below the cozy channel that i follow she is my absolute favorite she is my go-to anytime that i want a good recommendation I go to her. Let me just, I want to make sure though I actually tell you the right channel name. Yes. Okay. It is intentionally bookish. I will put it down below for you. And one that I just found is Cozy Mystery set on a cruise ship. So I have that saved to my watch later for when I want a new Cozy to start. I am going to try to finish the Jana de Leon series. Uh, or just catch up with it because there's 20 published right now. But they All right. We love to have a um, camera crashing time but um what was i what was i saying i know i was talking about this book basically it's just like nothing that i've read before so i'm liking it so far i'm on the audiobook i don't know how far in i am but this audiobook is really short and i don't know if that's just a thing with cozies like are they really that short but i only have two hours and 54 minutes and because it's written so like easily to read um, I actually have it on three times speed, which I've never done before, but this is why I wish I could also listen to romances without being like, because <sighs> they're so easy to read at this speed, like so easy because there's no words or anything that I can't pronounce or I haven't heard before. Like, you know, there are in fantasy and other books like that, but, uh, yeah, so my plan is to continue. Well, it's actually, I need to organize all of this footage because it is getting to four o'clock, which is when I like to have my first round of edits done for the daily vlogs. And I'll listen to this while I am doing that activity. But, uh, yeah. It's been pretty productive sprints, having a good time, and once I finish all of that, I will transfer to reading final girl support group and hopefully getting a chunk of that taken care of as well. But uh, yeah, I'll check in with you guys later and we'll see where I am at. I met an old man. I said, tell me your story.
searching for glory I took out an open I wrote in my story Then I kept walking on down Okay, hi guys. I just came in here so I could update the vlog really quick. Hello, Jake. Thank you for huffing and puffing. So, I am gonna put a picture up of here of the book I'm reading, First Grave on the right. Thank you, Jake. Oh, you're done? Sure, okay, great. So I'm 30 something, almost 40% into this. It is incredibly sexual and really weird. Um, I think it's like, a succubus or something like that that she's encountering i'm not 100 percent sure but it's like it just feels weird right now hopefully it'll explain itself because i looked i've mentioned before peter likes books is one of my favorite channels to find cozy mysteries through not because he's a cozy mystery channel but because he tends to like the same ones that i like like the jenna de leon series and so I went on Goodreads and I saw he actually rated this one five stars and the person who sent it to me said it was one of her favorites. So I'm like, I'm sure this is a plot point that's going to make sense in a second, but because I have not encountered really like, okay, the cozy mystery series that I've started involves two grandmas who are ex-military and a spy for America teaming up all together and like solving crimes in the city that they are in this small town while the sheriff tries to do it but they do it before him and then he's like starting to fall for the girl like it's cute it's cozy not sexual so i'm like this is new and the fact that it's like i'm listening to it on audio and it's so descriptive and it was out of nowhere so i think that might be why it's more like do what now because i definitely didn't expect it and i was listening to it so it's not like i could skim and see those words popping up so it's just a little moment <laughs> that i'm a little confused but it's fine it's still written really well it's entertaining it's going pretty fast so i'm going to go honestly record my partner cook dinner and um shower and all of those things and i will check in before the end of the night God. 